Let's bring in Wedbush Securities' Michael Pachter. He's a managing director at the firm and covers the entertainment and the software space. Michael, thanks for joining us here today. Got some of the, your notes here about what you, you make of the quarter, but I guess just to start off, overall, anything here that you've heard that is going to lead you to change your thesis coming out with the new recommendations either later tonight or tomorrow? Oh, I, I won't change. I, I'm not allowed to preview what, what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to change my thesis. Um, the only negative I heard in here is that they seem committed to continue to dump all episodes at once. And I had hoped that they would, you know, learn from splitting up the season of Stranger Things and start releasing content kind of sequentially weekly like everybody else does. That's an anti-churn tactic, and I thought they'd do that. Michael, the Microsoft... Um relationship is interesting. They could have gone a number of different ways. They went Microsoft. I don't think the market's making a big enough deal. I don't think it's, you know, for the next couple months. But long term, is that interesting to you? You know, I have to be be honest. I didn't even know Microsoft was in ad, ad tech. And, and of course they are. Um, where I think it gets interesting is that Microsoft mm -hmm. is committed to streaming to any device, streaming games. And I could see them bundling Netflix in with Game Pass. They're at 25 million subscribers now, and I can see Microsoft getting to 100 million subscribers. Uh, they signed a deal with Samsung for smart TVs. So it's a natural, and I think once they're in partnership with Netflix, that really makes sense. So I think that partnership could work out for both parties. Michael, when you get to a point when you're looking at subscribers and we're still talking about losses here, I mean, how do you know when you've sort of hit this this market saturation? It's always actually surprised me when they've still been able to pull subscribers from mature networks with all the password sharing. So I guess sort of just bundle all together. Where will potentially new subscribers come from and does it come from breaking apart family password sharing? When does that kind of, when does that happen? Well, dummy me, I thought they peaked at 25 million domestic. So, you know, they are, they're only at 75 million. Um, they're, they're close to saturation. And, and I actually think their approach on password sharing is intelligent. They're talking about a small upcharge for additional households using the same password. That's kind of what Spotify does. It's, like, it's kind of an unlimited family membership. Um, T-Mobile, I, I subscribe, it's $25 for each additional line. They don't care where the people live. So I think there's a way to kind of squeeze price without really offending anybody. And I think that's really what's going to happen. But yes, we're saturated in the U.S. I mean, they might grow another five or 10. The real way to get there is to offer a lower price here, and that's ad support. Michael, it's Karen. Thanks for being on. I have a question. It's not so much about Netflix. It's more your, about your history with this stock. And you were, you know, the lone sort of uh, bearish guy out there, well, well below the market. And finally, finally, that came around and you did seem to sort of pick near the bottom, if not the bottom, who knows. But did you ever sort of lose your resolve? Did you ever think maybe I'm really wrong here? Or how did you just stick to that the market's got it wrong? I, I told everybody I ever spoke to that they would etch on my tombstone that he was right about Netflix. So, no, never lost my result. Um, if you read my November 30th, 2011 downgrade note, everything I said that would happen happened. It just took eight years before it really happened. And I expected Disney to compete sooner. So, honestly, uh, I thought you'd have competitive streaming services in 2012. And I was wrong. And so I, I stuck with it. I probably could have upgraded for a few years and then flipped back, but I'm stubborn and stupid. <laughs> I don't know about that, Michael. We do appreciate you being here with us. It's a very interesting aim to talk through as these quarters have been quite interesting. Let's go ahead and trade this one. Dan, I want to give you the last word on Netflix for this moment. Yeah, listen, I've known Michael Pachter for a long time, and I think his work has been very thoughtful, and I think it's really easy to kind of, you know, tag him with the guy, the lone bear for that long. But if you read his notes over all the years, you took out some really good fundamental tidbits about this stock. So he has not been shorted. He's been just trying to lay out what the bear case is. Listen, I bought this stock about a month ago. I bought about a quarter position. I was kind of hoping, and I've been saying this on Fast Money, that we'd have one more kind of big downgrade to that subscriber guidance and show some metrics. Listen, Listen, we saw them. You guys just detailed them. It's not a great quarter here. I think it's just a bit of a relief rally. So I'm kind of in guys' camp. I think that that gap level in the last quarter in April near 250, I'd be really shocked if it gets over there anytime soon. And I'd expect the stock maybe to give up some of these gains. There was nothing that great in there other than it wasn't a disaster. But I am bullish long-term taking a multi-year view here. I do think they're going to get this ad-supported model correct.